From DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com, I'm Darren Marlar, and this is your Daily Dose of Weird News. This episode is brought to you by the audiobook One Bad Night by Jason R. Davis, narrated by Darren Marlar. Hear a free sample on the audiobooks page at MarlarHouse.com. What comes to mind when you think of back-to-school prep? Stocking up on notebooks and pencils? A trip to the mall for the latest sneakers? How about watching hours of content on YouTube? Well, for Generation Z, the video platform has become an integral part of the yearly late summer ritual, providing product suggestions, style inspiration, and do-it-yourself ideas. The most popular content of middle school students is hairstyles, makeup, and pranks. <laughs> High school students uh, they look most at advice sites, life hacks, and skits. And college students they are surfing mostly for advice and tech products. Do they make a Cliff's Notes version of YouTube? A woman in Germany called police to report what she thought was a bare-chested man with two big white dots on his forehead staring into her window. Well, The man turned out to be an emu, which had escaped from a local zoo. I can only assume that men look a lot different in Germany. Long drives and short fuses do not mix. A recent study shows that the average couple can last only 22 minutes into a road trip before they get into their first argument. That means most couples start bickering not long after they leave the driveway. The most common cause of car crankiness is clashes over directions, with 44 percent of the respondents to this recent survey admitting they fought over which way to go. Seems much of the stress of driving is caused by our own partner when we're behind the wheel. Which is exactly why every Sunday before heading to church I lock my wife in the trunk. Hundreds of pastors from Richmond, Virginia have signed a new statement of unity, rejecting the ideology of white supremacy and affirming that every human being is created in the image of God. According to CBN, the Metro Richmond pastors and ministry leaders who signed the statement repented for any role the church has played in the sins of racism and resolved to preach, teach, and advocate against it. But then somebody mentioned that Jesus wasn't white and a fistfight broke out. And Your puppy may have a better understanding of language than you think. Researchers in Budapest used fMRI to monitor 13 dogs while they listened to human speech, and the scientists discovered that the animals processed both the meaning of words and the tone in which the words were spoken, using similar areas of the brain that humans do. So your chewed-up slippers may not be because he's a bad dog, but because his feelings were hurt when you said bad dog. The nation's largest atheist organization, Freedom From Religion, is demanding that Senator Marco Rubio, a Republican from Florida, stop tweeting Bible verses from his Twitter account, telling him that doing so is a violation of the United States Constitution. Um, no, it's not. Uh, it's kind of interesting a group who's always screaming for freedom of speech when they want to say something don't believe in free speech for people that say stuff they don't agree with. Hmm. Then again, this is America, so well, you also have the right to be a hypocrite. A new study reports that older women are doing more and more binge drinking, usually after seeing the selection of older men available to them. In England, a farmer thanked firefighters who rescued a litter of piglets and two sows from a barn fire in February by giving them sausages made out of the animals. <laughs> wow, good thing they didn't have to save his kids from the fire. The study says every droid in the workforce is going to cost six humans their jobs. Plus, they don't pick it for 15 bucks an hour. In fact, they don't get paid at all, and they're perfectly happy about it. On September 9th in Austin, Texas, they're going to have a clown-only showing of the new movie It, based on the Stephen King novel. Because just being a Stephen King movie isn't disturbing enough. A guy in New Zealand was robbed of everything in his pockets by two men with a garden rake. So once you anti-Second Amendment folks get the guns banned, you'll next have to work on banning garden utensils. Sears says it's going to close another 28 Kmart stores. If you see a blue light special, it might be a sale on buying the actual store. Oreos are one of the most diverse cookies on the snack shelf. 
While most of us are accustomed to the traditional chocolate cookie and vanilla cream in the middle, there are literally dozens of other possible flavors that have been floated over the years, from avocado Oreo to firework Oreo. But now, Oreo may be prepared to top all of them by releasing a mystery flavor. Uh, no specific word on where or when it will actually be released. Yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure I like this mystery flavor idea. Now, that did not go over so well when I was in school and we had Mystery Meat Monday. A police chase in Arkansas last week caught everyone's eye as cops were after a man in a black Hummer with a casket on top. Worst attempt at an inconspicuous getaway vehicle of all time. It was every mother's nightmare. Michelle Dinning called police because her nine-year-old son Josh was missing. He'd been last seen in his bedroom the night before. For nearly four hours, a search party roamed the area looking for the UK boy. The police force put dozens of officers, search dogs, and even a helicopter to work. And then they decided to check the family home one more time and found Josh under his bed. Well, more specifically, in his bed, he had crawled through a gap in the bed frame. Officers found him after deciding to actually lift up all the beds. Turns out he was hiding because he didn't want to go to school. I think the perfect punishment for this kid? Homeschooling. That way he's always at school. Bill Nye the Science Guy has hit Disney with a $28 million lawsuit claiming he didn't receive enough profits from his TV series. See, now, this is what happens when people don't watch your show after finding out you have zero credibility, you're criticizing people when you have no science degree at all, only a degree in engineering. Bill Nye, the lying guy. As of next month, you can get your hands on a slice of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge's wedding cake when it gets auctioned off to raise money for charity. The fruitcake was designed by cake maker Fiona Carnes with Kate Middleton's passion for flowers and their meanings in mind. It has eight tiers and it's decorated with 900 sugar paste flowers. It's expected to sell for thousands of pounds per piece after one slice was sold in 2014 for around 8,000 pounds or about 9,456 US dollars. Unfortunately, though, being six years old, the cake isn't actually edible. Well, well it's a fruitcake. I, mean, I thought the half life on those was like twice as long as Twinkies. The new field at Tenino High School in Washington State is getting a lot of talk. They went with a black turf. Add in the team's black uniforms, the school colors, and other teams are complaining that it'll be hard to see the players. Really? Uh, the New York Jets wear green on green turf? They're considered the worst team in the NFL this year. Your argument is invalid. Everyone knows raising kids is hard, but what's the hardest moment of a mom's day? Well, according to a recent study of over 1,000 parents by Privilege Insurance, it's exactly 5.08 p.m. The reason? 5.08 p.m. is right when the battle begins to feed, bathe, and get those little tykes to bed. Many parents surveyed confessed that meltdowns often ensue when their kids refuse to eat what's on their plate or hop in the tub or drift off to sleep. Okay, now I'm not a parent, but my guess would be the toughest part of the day for a parent would be waking up in the morning knowing you have to start parenting all over again. They had a lockdown at Buckingham Palace Friday after a guy with a machete drove up and started swinging at guards. Somebody has been watching way too much Supernatural on the CW. Right in the middle of the New Orleans Square in Disneyland is the inconspicuous entrance to one of the most whispered-about spots in Disney parks across the globe – Club 33. Club 33 is a secret five-star restaurant that the regular public cannot access. There are only two ways to get into Club 33 – being an exclusive member or being invited by one. Membership costs up to $100,000 annually, with a reported $12,500 to $30,000 in additional annual fees. As of 2012, there was a 14-year waiting list for membership applicants. If it means you don't have to wait in line, though, for the rides and shows, it might actually be worth it. Gone with the Wind will be gone from the Orpheum's 2018 summer movie series in Memphis after several patrons went to this year's showing and called it insensitive. Yeah, l let me say that again. Gone with the Wind will not be shown as originally planned at the Orpheum's 2018 summer movie series in Memphis 
because a few people complained that it was insensitive. Eight Academy Awards, five Oscar nominations, it won the People's Choice Award for Favorite All-Time Motion Picture, constantly in the top ten greatest films of all time, and yet a few snowflakes keep it from playing at a film festival because their teeny-weeny feelings might be hurt? How about you tell those people, frankly, my dear, I don't give a dang, and tell them to grow up? If the New York Times motto is all the news that's fit to print, the National Enquirer's is all the news inside is made up. So don't be shocked when you hear that since the beginning of the year, UFO sightings are up, way up. And right now the U.S. has 300 times the number of UFO reports than the global median. Looking at the way people dress in Los Angeles alone, I can see why the aliens might feel more at home there than anywhere else in the world. Agnes Fenton was prescribed alcohol by a doctor for a benign tumor in 1943. She's been drinking whiskey and beer ever since. Agnes died last week in New Jersey at the age of 112. Now, if I can only get my doctor to write me a prescription for that so I have permission to take my medication while at work. The Federal Appeals Court agreed with a lower court's ruling saying Coach Joe Kennedy would not be able to go back to his coaching job at a Washington high school after he was dismissed for praying after football games. Kennedy was suspended in 2015 after he refused to stop praying at midfield after football games. He then sued the district on religious freedom grounds. He also sought a ruling against the district on whether he could return to work. But Wednesday, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled against Kennedy. Okay, so let, let me get this straight then. It is okay to take a knee at a football game to protest the United States, but it is not okay to take a knee at a football game to acknowledge the existence of God? Do I have that right? A consumer advocate group is accusing Gwyneth Paltrow's product, Goop, of making deceptive health claims to promote products featured on their website. Uh, whoa, whoa, you mean a tummy an actor might be pretending something is real when it's not? <gasps> whoa, that came out of left field. School bullies did not get enough sleep, according to University of Michigan scientists who found that pugnacious and pushy kids were more likely to suffer from sleep-disordered breathing and sleeplessness. They found 23 percent of children who bullied had conduct problems and had discipline issues in school, often snored, an indication of sleep-disordered breathing, and were sleepier during day hours. The sleep-deprived were more prone to aggressive behavior. That's right, you schoolyard bullies! You just need a nappy poo! The first single off Taylor Swift's upcoming new album is called Look What You Made Me Do, which appears to be a diss on Kim and Kanye. Or one of Taylor's ex-boyfriends of the past couple of months. You know, it's kind of hard to tell anymore. An ordinance banning plastic straws and plastic utensils will take effect next year in Seattle. <laughs> that should be a lot of fun trying to drink your soda from the fast food drive through using no straw, just the paper straw wrapper. One food dish won two awards at the 13th Annual Big Tex Awards at the State Fair of Texas. The Funnel Cake Bacon Queso Burger was the big winner, earning trophies both for most creative and for best taste savory. Man, I would love to try this, but I don't want to have to work off the 12 pounds I'd gain after the first serving. Gary Robbins is a trucker who drove coast to coast without ever stopping. Of course, there's only one way to make that happen – by staying hopped up on illegal drugs, which is exactly what police say he did. So the Alaska man was arrested in Deerfield, Massachusetts, and reportedly admitted to driving straight there from Seattle. His ride ended at a Circle K gas station where an employee called police after witnessing erratic behavior in the parking lot. After inserting his credit cards into the fuel tank and locking himself out of the vehicle, Robbins was seen trying to break into the truck from the space between the trailer and front cab. Police say the 49-year-old admitted to using crystal meth, LSD, and cocaine to fuel his non-stop cross-country ride. Wow, sounds like he would have been on a ride whether he had a truck or not. In Wuhan, China, jaywalkers and people whose faces are buried in their smartphones are getting protection from a busy intersection. Wuhan officials have had an anti-jaywalking gate installed. The gates, complete with LED signs across the top, block off crosswalks with two ropes that automatically lower during red lights. All of this because some people are too stupid to look up from their phones as they wander into traffic. Are we sure we don't want to just let these people be run over to keep them from contaminating the gene pool?
An ESPN radio announcer was arrested in Wyoming where he was drunk and naked inside a stranger's house. It was great for a brief spike in ESPN's ratings, though. President Trump was in Texas on Tuesday to visit areas ravaged by Hurricane Harvey. Gee, now you'd think those poor people would have suffered enough already, but I guess not. Lotto winner Mavis Wanchek now has more money than Beyonce, Leonardo DiCaprio, Mel Gibson, Kim, Kanye, and many other celebrities. So, what are you going to do with your three quarters of a billion dollars, Mavis? I'm getting new snow tires for my 99 Ford Escort. According to a new study, one in four Americans don't consider one-night stands cheating. Also discovered, one in four Americans are completely delusional. Recently in Florida, an intoxicated woman bit into a man's fishing line, then swam off with his lure. Alexandria Turner allegedly swam up to the man's line and began cursing at him. Well, then she nibbled at the line and then swam away with the bait. Cops accused her of disturbing the sense of public norm at the pier, and when they tried to handcuff her to take her into protective custody, she yelled, I'm bleeping naked! Oh, yeah, and guys, I, I hear she's single, too. Yeah. The California teen has developed a smartphone app for kids wanting to do extra chores. Both of those kids are said to be thrilled. Wisconsin and New Jersey actually have laws on the books that make it illegal to sell home-baked goods. So, what, what do you do for a bake sale, then? Well, here's what I would do. Bag all of the cupcakes and cookies in plastic Ziploc baggies. Sell the baggies for a buck each. And with each baggie, you also get free cookies or a cupcake. There you go. Problem solved. You're welcome. Well, there's yet another new study about coffee. This one says that four cups a day lowers your risk of death. Well, that's due to all the exercise you get walking back and forth to the bathroom. The secret to keeping your mind and body young and vibrant at any age? Getting your beauty sleep. According to an April 2017 study published in the journal Neuron, lack of quality shut-eye among senior citizens can raise their risk of memory loss and suffering wide range of mental and physical disorders such as Alzheimer's disease, heart disease, obesity, diabetes, and stroke. Matthew Walker, senior author of the study and professor of psychology at neurosciences at the University of California, Berkeley, says nearly every disease killing us later in life has a casual link to lack of sleep. So, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to have to go take a nap. Well, after the, after the daily dose of weird news. Hey, you got to have priorities. A new study finds that a beer buzz can boost a person's creativity. Researchers at the University of Graz in Austria they have concluded that mild alcohol intoxication can actually boost cognition and creativity through loosening up and refocusing. This study made possible by a grant from Anheuser-Busch. Believe it or not, some companies in Canada's British Columbia province can force women to wear high heels at work. Well, not anymore. The premier of the province, Christy Clark, announced Friday that companies can no longer impose such a rule. Clark, who belongs to the Liberal Party, called the practice dangerous and discriminatory. Well, yeah, definitely discriminatory, because Manalo Blahnik doesn't make high heels for men, and that's just wrong. The study says poor sleep can lead to dementia. Wait a minute, didn't I just talk about that a couple seconds ago? In Pennsylvania, 44-year-old Elwood R. Gutschel was arrested around 12.15 a.m. and charged with DUI. Ironically, at the time of his arrest, he was wearing a T-shirt which read, Drunk Lives Matter. Officers say they observed Gutschall committing multiple traffic violations in a green Ford pickup. After subsequent investigation, it was determined the driver was under the influence of alcohol beyond what he could safely operate a motor vehicle, according to the department's Facebook post. His blood alcohol test registered at 0.217%, nearly triple the legal limit. Most ironic mugshot in the history of mugshots. The Greeks were always given credit for inventing trigonometry, but new evidence shows that the ancient Babylonians came up with it a thousand years before the Greeks. The records also show that the Babylonians were the first to have both call waiting and hot pockets. There was a planned alt-right rally over the weekend on a San Francisco beach called Chrissy Field. Anti-alt-right protesters decided to make the beach somewhat unpleasant for rallygoers 
by organizing dog walkers to let their dogs poop all over the beach. An event was started called Leave Your Dog Poop on Chrissy Field. The dog walkers would then regroup on Sunday to clean up the poop. The idea got a lot of support, with one father even asking if it was okay to unload his baby's diaper because he didn't have a dog. However, others criticized the idea, saying the area should be kept beautiful. Still others suggested retaliating by picking up the dog mess and throwing it onto the streets of San Francisco. America is really fun right now, isn't it? In Wisconsin, a funeral home has applied for a liquor license. Hey, you wanted enough alcohol to say what you were really thinking about the deceased? Well, there you go. Giving kids too much candy could lead them to murder, according to a recent study. Research published in the British Journal of Psychiatry shows that children who ate sweets daily were prone to commit savage crimes as adults. Giving children candy and chocolate regularly may stop them from learning how to wait to obtain something they want, says a study participant. Not being able to defer gratification may push them toward more impulsive behavior, which is strongly associated with delinquency. So every Halloween, when your kid is dressed up as a serial killer and going door-to-door -door getting candy, he is ironically also being slowly turned into a serial killer. A dad has invented a new app that freezes a teen's cell phone if they don't respond to your text in a timely fashion. It's called Reply ASAP. He also plans to develop one for mother-in-laws called Shut Up ASAP. The study showed that millennials prefer their friends to text when they arrive at their house rather than ring the doorbell or knock, because if that's the standard procedure, anyone ringing or knocking is not a friend. Millennials have texting. Us old folks had super-secret knocks. There's a new beer coming out that contains marijuana. It's for those who get too full drinking beer but still want to have the munchies. It'll make you fat and dopey. Despite having no CEO for two months, Uber's bookings are up 17 percent. Hey, maybe we should try going without a leader in the United States and see if it's just as beneficial for us. Detroit spent $100 million on stadium renovations in the offseason. Both of their season ticket holders are said to be thrilled. An expecting couple in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania saw more than they expected during their baby's sonogram. Yes, it seems soon-to-be parents Alicia Zeke and Zach Smith fully believe they saw Jesus' face staring back at them during their baby girl's ultrasound, ahead of the birth of their baby girl in Chambersburg. Smith said the image brought tears to his eyes while his fiance Zeke, stood in disbelief. Smith says the image is a sign from heaven and calls it a blessing. The couple also put the image up on Facebook to see what others think. Not, not to be uh, all judging, but do you really think that Jesus would choose a couple that has had sex outside of wedlock to reveal himself? I mean, the Bible says that's a big no-no. Kind of makes me wonder if maybe this is really Satan? Do you like wine? Are you broke all the time? Then get ready for $5 wines at Target. No, not glasses of $5 wine, bottles of $5 wine. Target will start selling the $5 wine this coming Sunday, September 3rd, under the label California Roots. Target, making it more affordable to become a hobo. ABC is planning a new live-action adaptation of the classic cartoon The Jetsons. The sitcom, about a modern family living in a world of robots, holograms, and flying cars, will be set 100 years in the future and will capture the family through a modern filter. The characters will be based on the Hanna-Barbera version that originally ran from 1962 to 1963. Oh, wow, so it ran from 62 all the way through 63! Whoo! And ABC's counting on that to save the network? Man, <laughs> you gotta like those chances! A dry cleaner in Oregon has posted a sign that if you support President Trump, then they don't want you as a customer. Uh, that might have an effect if you're the only dry cleaner in the area. Uh, you're not, so enjoy your lack of business for being so obtuse. Heck, I didn't vote for Trump, but I still wouldn't want to do business with you just because you're being a jerk. In fact, if I were the competition, I would immediately put up a sign saying, who you voted for isn't any of our business, we just want to clean your clothes. The University of Victoria's Law Library is turning the page on innovation by introducing a new item students can borrow – a dog. Echo, a four-and-a-half-year-old black lab, 
can now be checked out from the library for 30 minutes at a time to give students a stress-relieving break with man's best friend. But don't keep the dog past your time, because the late fees are astronomical. I mean, each human dollar is like $7 in dog money. Worth noting that the Anheuser-Busch Brewery put beer production on hold this week so that they could can safe drinking water to distribute to flood victims affected by Hurricane Harvey. But Democrats are still angry about it because the cans contain the name Bush. In Shanghai, after encountering a police checkpoint late, one drunk driver came up with a creative way of getting out of failing a breathalyzer test. Less than 100 meters away from the checkpoint, the man fled his black Mercedes and began stumbling up a roadside hill before slipping and tumbling back down. It was there that police caught up with him. Noticing that he reeked of alcohol, they asked him to take a breathalyzer test, despite the fact that he kept insisting, I wasn't drinking, I wasn't driving. He then suddenly started eating grass by the handful. Officers tried to get him to stop, but he just kept going. Well, the stunt did save him from taking a breathalyzer test, but it did not save him from being taken back to the police station, where a blood test found that his blood alcohol content was 0.156 far over the legal limit. Plus, he tested positive for grass. Hillary Clinton will go on a 15-city tour this fall to promote her book, What Happened, with the most expensive seats in the house going for $1,200. Seriously? She expects people to pay over $1,000 to hear her say, I lost the election because people hated Trump, but they hated me even more? For every extra pound you put on, your brain shrinks, according to a recent study from UCLA. Elderly people who are obese or overweight have significantly less brain tissue than people of normal weight. The brains of obese people looked 16 years older than their healthy counterparts, while those of overweight people looked 8 years older, UCLA neuroscientist and senior study author Paul Thompson told Health Day News. Most of the brain tissue that was lost was in the frontal and temporal lobe regions of the brain, which governs decision-making and memory, among other things. Which explains why I make poor decisions about eating junk food. Because I'm fat. It's a vicious circle. The Texas Alligator Sanctuary is on alert as floodwaters threaten to unleash hundreds of gators. Roughly 350 reptiles could potentially swim out of their enclosures if water keeps rising. But the owner of a sanctuary says rumors that his gators have already escaped are not true. Gator country owner Gary Saraj spoke out, saying in a Facebook video, "...they're there. I'm not going to tell you that we may not lose a few little alligators like that. It's very possible, but I can tell you that we're almost through this thing and we're holding tight." Does this not sound like a sci-fi movie scenario like Sharknado, though? This summer, just when you thought it was safe to go back into the water. Floodgator. This flood has bite. The CEO of McDonald's was paid $15.4 million last year, which included perks like contributions to a retirement plan. Yeah, but did he also get a discount on his extra value meals? No. In Singapore, a 36-year-old man drove his car through safety barricades and into the ocean. His car sunk to the bottom of the ocean, but a bystander pulled him out. The man told police that a mermaid told him to plunge into the waters. I'm going to take a stab in the dark here and say this guy had been consuming a little bit more than chicken of the sea. The study says crying babies can reduce household income by 11 percent. Seeing as today's kids continue to be crybabies right into college, that number seems kind of low to me. Puretta is advertising a toothbrush holder that cleans the reported 60% of all toothbrushes that contain fecal matter. Okay, I gotta say, if your toothbrush contains fecal matter, I'm guessing you're probably brushing your teeth the wrong way. The University of Tampa assistant sociology professor has been fired after he suggested Hurricane Harvey is retribution for Texans who voted Republican. In a tweet this week, Kenneth L. Story stated, I don't believe in instant karma, but this kind of feels like it for Texas. Hopefully, this will help them realize the GOP doesn't care about them. But really, Professor Ken, no politician cares about us. Unless it's right before an election. This is even worse than it sounds. I mean, not only is he saying that Texas is being punished for voting Republican, you can only conclude that all hurricanes then are staunch Democrats. Personally, I see that as a reason not to vote Democrat, but you know, that's just me. 
In Great Falls, Montana, a woman called 911 to complain about the quality of the meth she had just purchased. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? First Lady Melania Trump got into some social media hot water Tuesday as she and President Trump headed to Texas to survey damage from Hurricane Harvey. The First Lady was photographed stepping out of the White House in four-inch stiletto heels. One Twitter user asked, who the bleep wears stiletto heels to a disaster area? The First Lady changed footwear, though, while on Air Force One, stepping onto Texas ground in white sneakers, which prompted critical comments like, why is she in Texas, to survey hurricane damage or to shoot hoops? I tell you, you can't do anything right on social media these days. The 79-year-old Canadian man has run his 100th marathon. Today's friendly reminder that you truly are an underachiever. There's a furniture store and a bowling alley in Houston that have opened their doors to flood victims. Man, new sofas, beds, recliners, a snack bar, a working bowling alley. With free accommodations like that, people might start praying for another hurricane. Clowns are complaining that the new movie It is scaring away business. Then they honk their horn and squirt water out of a flower and it's all okay. They were digging on the site of the new police and fire station in the town of Thornton, Colorado when they uncovered a Triceratops skeleton. Geologists say the skeleton is almost as old as the former police and fire station they're trying to replace. Zark's Burgers in the Philippines celebrated their anniversary recently by selling burgers for 15 cents each to the first 80 customers in the door. Thousands showed up for the burgers that normally sell for $2.84. Zark's Burgers. <laughs> kind of sounds like something you'd do after getting a bad hunk of meat. I got a 15-cent burger, but then later I zarked all over the place. Authorities around the world are on the alert for the fugitive billionaire heir to the Red Bull energy drink fortune. He's proving extremely difficult to catch, though, since he obviously never needs sleep. The Muppets have debuted the new voice of Kermit the Frog. It's very well done, it just takes a while to get used to the Brooklyn accent. A woman in Southern California was about to eat an organic salad recently when she found a tiny frog in the salad. She explains, I'm halfway through my salad, and as I'm going to stab another bit, I see the frog peeking out from under the salad. I jumped back. I screamed, there's a frog in my salad! So the woman and her husband put the amphibian in an old aquarium in their home and named it Lucky. Good name. Lucky for you that you didn't swallow him. Lucky for him you didn't stab him with a fork. Maybe not so lucky for the Target store who you can now sue because they sold you lettuce with a frog living in it. Now a new study claims that low-fat diets could lead to an early death. You know what's going to kill me? All these studies. A woman who was arrested for throwing a cup of urine on a Washington, D.C. bus driver says she was angry the driver told her to have a nice day, but in a sarcastic tone. She adds, I was provoked. I hate the Metro. I'm not buying this for a moment. She had no idea the guy was going to say, have a nice day, before she boarded the bus. But in order to throw a cup of pee on the driver, she had to already have had that. So who walks around with a cup of urine just waiting to be offended by something? Some people are actually charging $99 for a gallon of fresh water in Texas. Then again, that's basically the cost of a coffee at any Starbucks. A university freshman had a lot to celebrate after riding 2,672 miles across China for the start of a new semester. He finished the trip in 22 days. And I've heard of a guy biking to school from home, but I think 2,672 miles might be a bit too much if you're planning to live at home and save money on rent. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle ended their three-week vacation to Africa with a visit to romantic Victoria Falls. Okay, remind me again regarding Prince Harry, vacation from what? If you're already an official weirdo, please share this video on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and other social media to help get the word out. To become an official weirdo, click that subscribe button and click that little bell next to the subscribe button to be part of the notification squad. While you're at it, click that like button to let the world know that you are an official weirdo.